if I hadn't been the person that had actually gone through this, I would find it hard to believe. Um, if I saw this in a movie or read it in a book, I would automatically think it's fiction. I'm doing great, how are you? The Constitution guarantees everyone accused of a crime a fair trial. USA Today has spent six months investigating misconduct by federal prosecutors to find out just how often that guarantee comes up short. We've documented more than 200 cases in which judges threw out convictions or rebuked prosecutors for misconduct. The violations set guilty people free and put innocent people in jail. As a former federal prosecutor, it actually makes me a bit sad to see a list like this because you really hope that prosecutors want to do the job for the right reason, not because they want to win, but because they believe by following the rules, they'll still get a conviction. The most common and most serious violations we identified were in cases where prosecutors hid evidence that could have helped people prove their innocence. That's what happened when Nino Lyons was put on trial in 2001. Step through, seal, go. Good seal, Carmen, good body. If it can happen to me, it can happen to you. Come on, Carmen, come on, Carmen. I'm the oldest of seven kids, and the way my mom and dad raised me was, your reputation means the world. Follow through, follow through. If you don't have anything else in life, you have your words, you have your reputation. I had a clothing store and nightclub at the time. I had never been uh, incarcerated or in jail for anything. I didn't drink. Then, I don't drink now, don't smoke, never use any kind of illegal drugs. I was just trying to do good, positive things in our community. Had never had any problems with law enforcement, other than the fact that I always tried to prevent them from harassing and bothering people in our community. December 20th, at 10 o'clock a.m., my life and my children's life and his life changed forever. Police searched Lyon's house in December of 2000. The next year, federal prosecutors accused him of being a major cocaine trafficker. After listening to more than 20 prison inmates testify against him, a jury agreed. He spent the next three years in jail. It's the United States of America versus Antonio Lyons, AKA Nino. I remember reading that on all the documents and I remember in my mind, the map of the United States of America versus this one person and you don't think you can win. You really don't. If I had heard all these comments about Nino Lyons and I had been John Brown on the jury, I would have had some serious reservations about Nino Lyons. I really would have. You know, I guess I watched too much TV, television. I just thought that, okay, you have to have some evidence and you go before a jury and um, the jury listens and um, hopefully they're able to figure out, oh my goodness, um, this man doesn't have a blemish, you know, except for a couple of speeding tickets. But prosecutors never told Lyons about evidence that could have discredited his accusers. One of them struggled to identify his photograph. Others had been promised they'd be released from prison early if they implicated him. When those secrets finally came to light, a judge threw out the charges against him and set Lyons free. To be able to hug your daughter if she fell down tumbling. Hallelujah. I've talked to him through the glass, so I haven't touched his hands in, in three years. Being able to run on the field, you know, when your son is playing football or, or just being at their events. You're, you're talking about important years of their lives, and um, I miss some of those. I'm happy to be home, at least going home, but uh, am I satisfied? No, because I think I've spent 34 months of my life away from my kids for no reason at all. We would pray every Sunday night. Our prayer always was let the truth be told or let the government be exposed. This past July, the judge who set Lyons free took another extraordinary step. 
He declared that Lyons was an innocent man, and he criticized the federal prosecutors who put him on trial for, quote, a concerted campaign of prosecutorial abuse that included covering up evidence and allowing inmates to lie to the jury. To be declared actually innocent, it means a lot. God, God always got somebody to back you up. <laughs> he always got somebody to back you up. If, if somebody wanna, wanna, wanna hurt you, God got uh, some big guy standing there saying, don't you bother him. It not only proves what I was saying from the very get-go, but it also helped restore my reputation, my family's reputation. And that was important for me because even if the president comes out tomorrow and says, you know, this man is 1,000% innocent, you're going to have somebody somewhere say, oh, I'm not sure about that. I don't think the government would have did that uh, if he was innocent. When they targeted him, they targeted me. They targeted my kids. So you become a target and they don't have the courtesy to say, we're wrong. Everything related to this cost me everything I, I had financially, everything that I had saved up to, you know, for the future of my children, the college expenses. Attorney General Eric Holder declined to be interviewed. But beginning this year, every federal prosecutor is required to get two hours of training to avoid the types of problems that occurred in the Lyons case. The Justice Department would not explain any of the violations we identified. Its own investigations are secret and it wouldn't tell us what, if anything, it did to punish the prosecutors who were involved. Frankly, I think that all prosecutors, both federal and state prosecutors, should be held to the highest standard. They have a lot of power, and they should be accountable to their supervisors and to the public at large. If this is the person who's repeatedly violating the rules, or doing it in the big case, or it's a really serious violation, frankly, it should cost them their job. We spent six months investigating misconduct, but experts told us we'll never know exactly how often it happens. Even the Justice Department doesn't know for sure. The lead prosecutor in Lyons' case was Bruce Hinchelwood. He declined to comment. His former boss, Paul Perez, described Hinchelwood as sloppy and lazy. The department investigated his handling of the case, but wouldn't say what it found. The Florida Bar told Hinchelwood to attend a one-day ethics workshop. He, he didn't go to jail. He didn't serve three years for nothing. I did. He hasn't been taken away from his, his kids, you know, his wife, uh, his community. I was. And not that I'm bitter about it so much for myself, but what happens when the next person comes along and gets done the same way? And maybe he doesn't have a Judge Presnell who, who's going to question, wait a minute, something's not right about this.